contributing, uh, especially for Google Summer of Code. And nice. uh, my project was semantic versioning plugins for Jenkins. So that's uh, actually why I started joining Cloud Native SIG. But uh, now I've been interested uh, in Cloud Native and infrastructure SIGs in general. So I'm attending. Great, welcome. Thank you. Do you have any questions you. on your on the project you're interested in, on your proposal? Actually, after submission of my proposal, um, I, uh, one contributor uh, commented on it, uh, and I had questions related to that that I wanted to ask. So if that's fine, I'll go ahead and ask them. Yes, please do. Um, Actually, just a second. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, yeah. Welcome, Navita. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, hi everyone. Hey, welcome. Yeah, hi, hello, hello everyone. I'm Navita, and yeah, I'm currently just uh, draft my. I just posted my proposal in GSOC. And I'm just here to listen to all of you. Great. And on the Cloud Event plugin. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, on Cloud Event plugin. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, thank you for your proposal. We were so pleased with the proposals. They're, they're looking great. So it's great to have yeah, your involvement thank you. and your interest. So thank you. Uh, so, will it be okay if I go ahead and share my screen so it will be easier yes. for Gareth and everyone else too? Yes, please, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, um, I hope you can see the screen now. There might be a slight delay. It's It says you've started screen sharing, but it is black. Okay. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay. Oh, my uh, laptop froze, I guess. Weird. It's all right. Actually, this problem happened earlier also when I was share, screen sharing on Zoom. I think it's some version issue that I have of Zoom SDK. Uh, okay, it froze. I would I'd rather stop sharing. Uh, I'm so sorry for the issue. Actually, right. uh, would you like to put a link in the chat? Yeah, and then I can share. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm doing that. Great. There we go. Sorry. There we go. Okay, so um, if it's scroll down to page number four. Yeah, so um, Jesse commented saying that uh, a similar plugin act does not exist in uh, JEP 229. So, uh, and we had this uh, in our mind that it exists and we'll replace it with Jenkins. So, Actually, if that is not true, then the, the half of my deployment part of the project uh, becomes wrong, I say, or invalid. Then how? I mean, okay, yeah. So, um, so do I need to be very? No. So, um, so JX JX release version is a plugin that is for JX, and it is available, but it can also run as a GitHub action. Um, to determine the next version. Um, and because it's run as a GitHub action, it's possible to integrate it with the JEP229 stuff. It's not by default part of the JEP229 stuff, but I could see it becoming um, that in the future. Um, and it, it's, it's a bit, up in the air because the current method of versioning with JEP229 uses like the number of commits since 
origin and um, a guitar to produce something unique. And unfortunately, it produces non-semantically versioned or non-semver compatible versions. So it means it's yeah. kind of quite, it's not very useful for plugin developers. Now, if you're developing a very, very simple plugin that never requires backporting or fixes or anything like that, then it might be absolutely fine to use this always incrementing number. But most of the plugins that are classed as like tier one, tier two plugins for Jenkins, you have they have to provide backports for them when there are fixes that need to be done or security releases. So, um, and, and it, they are properly semantic, semantically versioned. So I think like, they need a different way of doing it. We, we've, we've heard from Mark that like certainly on the Git plugin, switching to pure JEP229 as is, is not going to work for them. Um, they, need a, they need a way of doing semantic versioning. Okay. So the both, I mean, he is also right and we are also right. So like, yeah. That, okay. Do you, um, does that give you enough information to, to move ahead with this and to think about how you, the work you're gonna do? Do you have any more questions for Gareth? Uh, yeah, just, one second, I think I have one more question. Great. Ha, so um, it's on page 15. Uh, I'm so sorry I'm making you. No, I, I, I love it. It's great. This is excellent. Okay. Yeah, this comment. So, um, of course, uh, as far as I understood it, it's like we are complicating or what I'm proposing is a very complicated approach and a rather simple CLI tool would do the job. So um, I actually did not include that in the proposal and it can be done, a simple CLI tool. So um, shall we modify the approach or uh, I shall, shall I add that thing in the timeline? So that, that is about writing. So whatever file that you potentially read um, the version from, that is about writing the version back into the file as like an optional thing. Right. Yes. So um, yeah, that, I mean, that's valid. Um, we will need, we need a way of doing that. There will be certain builds that will want to have that um, in place. Um, at the moment, I mean, you could do it by extracting the version out and running a Maven set version to exp explicitly push that back in if it's a Maven prompt. But um, I would okay. have thought that there would be, um, that's an extra step and it would probably make sense to just do it in a single pass. Um, okay. Um, so like writing back into the uh, POM file or the Gradle file is not needed and writing a text file where uh, like the way he's suggesting uh, that is. So I actually, I think you'll probably want to do both. Um, like you may okay. find that you, you may find that. So within the context of building, for instance, Jenkins plugins, they're, they're either Gradle or Maven and they're pretty straightforward builds. Um, you could write, writing and or updating the POM would be fine. Creating a tag would be, again, also would be fine. It's, it's, it's pretty simple. But what we're seeing is the use for this in like more, much more complex builds where you may be wanting to trigger a make file or something else or another process. You may need those, you know, those variables. So writing, writing a file with the version in is going to be handy for some people. Um, updating a, a file that you've, you know, really, or just echoing it to the screen, that also might be useful. Um, okay. So providing support for everything and then asking the user what he wants is the idea. 
Yeah. Okay. I think there probably is some confusion around. So when I created the proposal, I created it as the semantic versioning plugin for Jenkins, but there is already a semantic versioning plugin for Jenkins that seems to do nothing to do with semantic versioning. Um, I think it just parses the version. That's all it does. Um, so okay. I would probably go with like maybe, I don't know what we do with the, actually I don't know how this works, Cara, but would it make, would it simplify things if we could rename the proposal slightly to conventional commits plugin? I think we, we have space to alter the work that is done. Um, I don't yeah. think we can rename it under uh, GSOC. The, the proposal is now submitted and that deadline is passed. Sure, but sure, in yeah. this community bonding period, of course, you know, the understanding of the problem space, the exact work that's going to be done, that, that's fine for that to evolve. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Oleg. Hi. Sorry, I was a bit late. So that's good. Thanks for being here. We're talking about um, a semantic versioning plugin for Jenkins' proposal for GSOC mm -hmm. and going over some questions. Uh, I do not have any more questions. The, uh, the final one would be that shall I rename the document over here uh, or not? And if it's uh, creating confusion, I think the document makes sense. I would I probably leave the document as it is because it 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 relates to the proposal. But maybe we need to put add some text into the proposal to say like hey, this is also known as the conventional commits plugin. Yeah. Um. Just, just, sorry. This is very good, on, Alec. Yeah, just to clarify the current state with GSOC, uh, the proposals have been submitted on April 13th. And it means that basically you have a final version. You cannot modify it anymore. Um, and as we discussed at the office hours on Wednesday, we will be basically making decision and reviewing the version of proposal submitted on April 13th. If the proposal uh, gets accepted, if you have a project, uh, then uh, they will become a community bonding period of three or four weeks uh, this year, uh, where you will work uh, together with mentors to basically convert this proposal uh, to the design specification, etc. And uh, all these commands, uh, terminology issues, etc. can be uh, addressed there. So for example, when we publish a project page on Jenkins IO, we can apply another name. Um, and we can even ask Google support to change the name on the GSOC website, though usually people do not do that. Uh, but yeah, until uh, the project begins in May, yeah, basically whatever you change is just uh, preparation for the next phases if the project gets accepted. Okay. Sorry if my comment was a bit out of context, but usually when we talk uh, with students, uh, they want to modify proposals later. Oh, no, no, it wasn't out of context. I said, it's okay, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so right now you're welcome to do anything in the Jenkins community, basically as common contributor. If you want to keep enhancing uh, your proposal, etc., you're welcome to do that. We will be just reviewing the version uh, which was submitted. Uh, but yeah, after that, uh, these comments can be integrated into the plan. Okay. I mean, um, thank you, Garrett, for, like, and, uh, for helping me. I have no more questions. And Navita, would you? Um, I'm sure I mispronounced your name. I am so sorry. Would you would you have any questions for us on the GSAC process or proposal? Or yeah, I have, but now but now 
yeah i had not not clear earlier clear that that we have to continue working on the project in the community body in this yes yeah, that's i have to talk. And do you have a, a good sense of how you want to move forward in the coming weeks in terms of engaging with your proposal or with the community? Sorry, uh, it's not an issue in my side. Can you repeat it again? It's raining here, actually. That's it. I, I just wanted to make sure that you had a good sense of how you wanted to move forward in the coming weeks. With either the work on your proposal or other contributions to the community, or if you had any other questions in general about Jenkins or GSA. No, 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 I don't have any questions. Okay. Okay. Well, don't hesitate to ask in the Gitter channels, um, and we welcome your participation. We're very excited about GSA. So thank you both. Yeah, just one side note. So if you don't know exactly what to do with regards to JSOC in the coming months, uh, one of the things you could consider is basically focusing on your study, uh, finishing up, uh, whatever tasks uh, you have there. Because if you get uh, selected uh, to JSOC, uh, then you will be able to dedicate more time. Uh, and if you don't get selected to JSOC, uh, again, uh, it's uh, something that is useful for you. So our recommendation is basically if you can uh, address uh, uh, basically whatever questions you have in this semester, maybe you could start from that because it will also help you in the future. Yeah. Again, it's a side note. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if we don't have any more questions about GSAC, it was there, um, were there any action items or things you wanted to bring up about the Texon client plugin, Gareth? <laughs> no, I'm, yeah, I'm about the tech, so the Tecton client stuff. So I don't they believe we got any proposals for that. Um, yes, that's true. But I meant in general. Uh, I know that James submitted a PR to that this morning. I was going to look at. Oh. No, I'm not sure what the current state of, on that is. Um, uh, it would be really good to get a kind of get it working in a pipeline with a form of end-to-end -end test, so we can kind of cut a, you know, version one release. Um, or something that's less of an alpha release, at least. Yes. Okay, excellent. And Oleg, did you want to give any updates about the Kubernetes operator plugin? Kubernetes operator, not a plugin. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so just a quick update on the governance side. Uh, one month ago, we voted for accepting the project as official Jenkins sub project. Um, so it was agreed and it was effective uh, on that date. Uh, after that, uh, the Virtus Lab team, uh, they made some updates on uh, the websites and they also created a request of the Jenkins IO. So it has been landed. And yesterday we have published an official blog post. Um, you can also find it in LinkedIn. We will also do something about Twitter within the next few hours. But yeah, the project is now effectively a part of well, Jenkins project like it was before, but in a more official status. Uh, we will also work with the team to integrate uh, the Jenkins Kubernetes separator um, into the roadmap. There was ongoing, there was a discussion about open governance for the project, which kind of fell apart because Red Hat decided to proceed with its own uh, operator at that point. But we will need uh, to recover this discussion and to see how we could improve that. Yes, what is the relationship between Red Hat's work and what, yeah. Okay, so let's say uh, Red, Hat, Red Hat's operator, you know, right now it's a hard fork on Jenkins Kubernetes operator, which is no longer fully compatible. Uh, and yeah, it evolves in a different direction. Why it happened? Because yeah, Red Hat has its own interests, mostly on the OpenShift platform. 
uh, when they were trying to contribute to Jenkins operator, uh, it wasn't possible to integrate changes because maintainers were not available. Then there were disagreements on the roadmap. Uh, we tried to mitigate it uh, by uh, in the Jenkins governance board, but uh, getting call sides on uh, in uh, the discussion. Uh, we offered the open governance proposal. Then uh, it was supported by Red Hat by the Jenkins governance board. But Christo Schlapp at that point was, uh, was not available. Uh, so finally, uh, Red Hat uh, decided to proceed with its own operator. And again, uh, we as Jenkins project supported that. So right now, there are two operators. One is called the Jenkins operator, which is now official sub project. Another one is Jenkins automation operator, if I recall correctly, or something like that, which is basically Red Hat's uh, project. Uh, it's been developed again as a part of the Jenkins project. Uh, but yeah, these separators are not compatible with each other. So this state is not optimal from the community standpoint, but yeah, that's what we have. Okay, thank you for the update. Mm -hmm. yeah, I still want to sync up with Webhav, uh, Akram, and uh, other contributors from Red Hat to see what we actually plan for that. But my understanding that they are fine with the current status quo because it also allows them to focus specifically on the OpenShift ecosystem. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other topics that you all would like to bring up for discussion today? We're at the half hour. Okay, well, we're at the half hour. Uh, thank you all for being here. And um, again, thank you very much for your GSOC proposals. I'm very excited. <laughs> all right, have a thank good, um, <laughs> have a good rest of your day. Oh, I